Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Studio One is a fascinating and deep software, but yet one of the comments that always pains my heart when I read it is Studio One is so hard to learn. It's gonna take years to get started and get anywhere with it. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, most of Studio One follows one single workflow philosophy that you can apply in almost every situation and that is drag and drop. There's nothing else required and this applies to so many different scenarios. If you want to apply an effect on a track, you just drag and drop from the browser. If you want to add an instrument to your song, you drag and drop it from the browser. If you want to move events around the timeline, you also do that with drag and drop. And if it doesn't work with drag and drop, then often it works with a modifier drag and drop. Like for example, if I hold down command on a Mac or control on Windows and I drag away, this allows me to remove plugins like so, right? Or if I don't do that and I just uh, drag and drop, then I move the order around. Or if I move a plugin to the sense portion from the insets portion, I'm actually creating a new effects channel with that insert applied on it. So all of these behaviors, are kind of expected, right, from an intuitive standpoint. And that's actually how they work too. So you don't have to overcomplicate things in Studio One so much. It really just is a drag and drop motion. If you just stick to the drag and drop philosophy in Studio One, I'm certain that you can already master 80 to 90% of the software, which is more than enough to create all of your music and beyond. And to really hammer that point home today, I want to show you just as an example, how easy it is to save and recall one or multiple track and channel settings in Studio One. It couldn't be easier let me show you so right here I have my drum production more or less finished I started out with some raw stems that sounded like this not very convincing and I worked with volumes pans and insert effects and send effects until it sounded like this Right? And let's say that I'm happy with this now and I'd like to save the mixer configuration for later use in other productions. So if I ever get similar sounding drums again, then I could just recall that in the new production, drag and drop the new audio stems where they belong in the mixer configuration and I'm done. Right? That's kind of the dream of every workflow optimizer <laughs> like myself. And that's exactly what Studio One allows me to do. This reminds me of the fact that I started using Studio One because I was just about 25% faster with the software, which in turn meant I make 25% more money per hour as a professional mixing and mastering engineer. It was like a money decision uh, before it became an actual passion of mine. And this is once again demonstrated in what I'm about to show you. So right here, if I want to save these tracks, you know, with all of their instruments, with the virtual instruments applied, I mean, with the uh, channel settings like channel volume and pan, with the sense settings, with the insert effects applied and all of the presets, how do I save that? Well, if we don't think about this in a complex way and just think intuitively, the easiest thing we could possibly do is to just drag the track, like I want that track here, to the browser, right? That's all I would do. Like, and then I just hope it works. And it does work. Like if I do this with the kick drum here, I just drag and drop that to the browser and I just saved a track preset. It just showed up right here. And now I have a brand new track preset called kick that I can then recall with a drag and drop. Now this works for entire folders too. So if I just take this folder track right here, the drums, right? That contains all of the mixer settings of all of the drums that I've been working on here. I just drag and drop that directly to the instruments browser. I can also take the effects browser. It works the same way, right? You just grab the track, drag it to the browser. And now I see I saved the drums in their entirety right here. And if I assume that I'm working in a completely new production here, I'm just going to switch the song with one single click to the other one that I've opened. You could see all of these drums right here. And if you check the mixer console, nothing is mixed. It just sounds dry and boring. There's nothing here. Then I could just go ahead to my browser, 
open the track presets folder yet again and just drag and drop my drums into this production. And you can see that the mixer console is now being populated with pre-mixed mixer channels that I can still completely change to my liking. This is just a starting point to save me some time. And if the drums are kind of similar sounding to the ones that I've mixed previously, then I could just go ahead and move these raw stems here to the pre-mixed tracks that I just imported. In this case, it's the same structure, so I can literally just do this. And I have the fully mixed drums right here. To recap, all you need to do to save any kind of track preset is Studio One. It doesn't matter if it's a virtual instrument preset or an audio channel preset, does not matter. You just drag and drop that from the track in the arrangement to the browser. And if you want to recall it, you just do the reverse thing. You just drag and drop from the browser into your arrangement. So that is true for dragging into the Instruments and Effects browser. You can actually also drag into the Files browser and then it works also for node events such as this MIDI part right here. So right here I have my desktop in the Files browser and I just uh, locate to my Ideas folder that I've created there. And if I now drag and drop over, I get the track preset saved with all of the insert, output routings and so forth plus the MIDI data and an audio loop that I can use for auditioning, um, which can be very useful before I commit to recalling that preset in a different production. This feature is called Music Loops and I have covered that extensively in another tutorial because it's one of my absolute favorite Studio One features. And if you want to learn more about that, please check it out right here. So to summarize, yes, Studio One is a deep and partially complex software, but depending on what you're using it for, it can also be as easy and simple as you want it to be. If you stick to drag and drop, most of the things in Studio One are right at your fingertips. And with that in mind, thank you for watching.